we're doing another iPhone 13 Pro Max drop test. But this time, instead of dropping it from one and a half meters up, which ended up shattering both the back and that ceramic shield glass on the front, we're dropping it from a lower one meter height to see if it could at least survive from that height, considering last year's iPhone 12 Pro Max was able to do so without a problem. And since we haven't tested Google's all new Pixel 6 Pro yet, we're gonna be dropping that phone as well to see if it can fare any better. Let's get to dropping. Round number one, backdrop. In three, two, one. After that backdrop, it's not a bad result for either phone. The iPhone looks so much better than it did in our last test when we dropped it from higher up, with it only suffering this tiny little crack here at the bottom. The Pixel, on the other hand, well, it did even better. There are no cracks in the glass, which I think mostly had to do with that camera bar acting as a little bumper to protect it. Now, as a result of this, the camera bar did suffer a few scuff marks, which do look worse than the small scuffs on the iPhone's camera bump, but with the rear glass remaining fully intact on the Pixel, I have to give it the win here in round number one. Round number two, corner drop. Two, one. And after that corner drop, the stainless steel frame on the iPhone, along with its more rounded corners, help it fare better here. There's only very light scuff marks on the iPhone, something that you'd only be able to see under direct light like we have here. Whereas on the Pixel, the scuffs definitely dig in a little deeper. It's not anything too bad, but still a clear win for the iPhone in round number two. Round number three, face drop. In three, two, one. <laughs> And after that face drop from one meter, no, the iPhone's ceramic shield glass still cracks, as does the Gorilla Glass Victus on the Pixel. So a disappointing result for both phones here, but given that last year's iPhone 12 series was able to handle the tougher one and a half meter drop, I was really hoping to see the iPhone 13 Pro Max here at least survive this one meter drop. But if anything, at least the 13 Pro Max here doesn't look as bad as the Pixel does, with Google's flagship actually losing a chunk of glass at the bottom corner. So while it isn't a good result for the iPhone here, it still did better than the Pixel, given it the win in round number three, bonus round. Okay, with both phones still technically remaining fully functional, we're gonna push them to their limits, dropping them up to 10 times onto a smooth steel surface from higher up at just under one and a half meters. In three, two, one. And after that first bonus drop, the Pixel's curved edge gets even more shattered, while the iPhone looks pretty much the same as it did before. But the important thing here is both phones are still working just fine, so we'll keep on going. Four drops into it, and the original cracks on each phone are starting to spiderweb as you'd kind of expect. But both phones still remain fully functional, so let's keep on going. All right, seven drops in now, and we have a few dead pixels on the Pixel 6 Pro's display. But the good news is the rest of the screen still works just fine, so the test must go on. And after all 10 bonus drops, the Pixel's glass looks in really bad shape. There's obviously those dead pixels in the top right corner, but the phone still remains fully functional, even that in-screen fingerprint scanner. The iPhone, on the other hand, well, it looks pretty good given what it's been through. That small little crack on the back didn't spread at all, which is kind of surprising to see. And while it obviously didn't do as well as the iPhone 12 Pro Max from last year, at least when compared to the Pixel, outside of that first round, the iPhone did better overall, giving it the win here in this drop test. 